good afternoon students i once again welcome you all to this english class 12th english unit 2 second poem our kasuruna tree written by torutath this is the second part of the video of this poem in the first part of the poem we learned that the poet published this poem in 1881 torutath celebrates the majesty of the kasuruna tree that she used to see by her window in the garden she remembers her happy childhood days spent under it she revives her memories with her beloved siblings her beloved siblings are her brother abju and her sister aru to recapitulate the first stanza the poet has given a beautiful description of the giant kasuruna tree the tree is described as a source of delight to the poet both in her past and present when you observe the first stanza we could see a creeper climbing the strong trunk of the kasuruna tree up to its very summit the creeper winds the rugged trunk of the tree like a huge python though no other tree could survive the strangle hold of this creeper but the kasuruna tree could survive of this strangle hold here in the first stanza the tree is described as a brave and glorious and also we could see the clusters of crimson flowers where it hung among all the boughs of the tree and it looks like the giant tree wearing a scarf and most often at nights the nightingales sing sweet songs and the garden overflows with the sweet music not only of a nightingale but also birds sing endlessly while men repose what do i mean repose here sleeping when all human beings sleep at night the birds sing endlessly and enjoy their time in the second stanza the poet is delighted to see the lovely kasuruna tree through the casement mostly in the winter season she observed all these things when the morning comes she observed that a gray monkey sits like a statue on the crest of the tree and watches the glorious spectacle of the sunrise and in the lower branches of the tree she observed the the young ones of the monkey jumped and played and enjoyed their timings and also she brings the beauty of the nature she says that she heard a chirping of the cuckoos that praise the day that welcomes the day she also saw that a sleepy cows stroll to their pastures for grazing as soon as the day comes and also she saw that there was a tree clad in frost beautiful water lilies on the broad pond where the kasuruna tree cast its shadow and that seems to be a uh, snow amassed it was not the snow amassed uh, or gathered together but of the thickness of the lily water lilies seems to be snow amassed that was a thing that we learned in the first part of the video now let us move on to the third stanza of the poem our kasuruna tree written by torutat let me read the third stanza and thereafter we shall learn it line by line with the meanings but not because of its magnificence dear is the kasuruna tree my soul beneath it we have played though years may roll o oh sweet companions loved with the love intense for your sakes shall the tree be ever dear blend with your images it shall arise in memory till the hot tears blind mine eyes what is that ditch like murmur that i hear like the sea breaking on a single beach it is the tree's lament and airy speech that happily to the unknown land may reach okay in this third stanza we are going to study we are going to learn in what way the poet was attracted how did she bring out her past memories what all things makes her to remember the past memories let us learn it line by line 
but not because of its magnificence. Dear is the casuru nut to my soul, beneath it we have played. What's the meaning of magnificence? Extremely beautiful or extremely huge. The poet says that it's not because of the majestic appearance of the casuruna tree that it is dear to her heart and soul, but she had spent happy moments under it with her siblings. They have played under this tree many a times. Who are those siblings? Abju and Aru. Okay, so that's it. Though years may roll, O oh sweet companions, loved with the love intense, for your sakes shall the tree be ever dear. She says that many years have passed. She still cherishes those moments spent with her sweet companions. Who are the sweet companions? Again I told you, I tell you, Abju and Aru, whom she loved intensely. What's the meaning of intense? Earnestly or very emotionally. With purpose, because they are her brother and sister. So intensely she loved them. The poet says that for the sake of her brother and sister, let the tree remain dear to her forever and ever. Because she liked the tree. Not only she liked her friends, her siblings, both of them liked that tree. That's why she wanted the tree to be dear forever. Blend with your images. It shall arise in memory. Till the hot tears blind mine eyes. The tree is the only bond between the poet's past and the present. Look at the first line itself. Blend with your images. What's the meaning of blend? Mix it. She thinks about some scenes of agony of her siblings that fills her heart with pain and tears well in her eyes. Whenever she thinks about her siblings, automatically number of images come to her mind. And automatically, when she feels about, thinks about them, the tears come out from her eyes. What is that dish-like murmur that I hear, like the sea breaking on a single beach? What is the meaning of dish-like? It's a lamenting silently. When she was thinking about her images of her siblings, Suddenly, she could hear a mournful murmur and, and was that sound. What was that sound? It is the tree's lament. Like the, like the sea breaking on a single beach. As if the sea waves breaking on a rocky beach. Here, single beach means a rocky beach. Rocky means it's not of source of big, big stones, but of small, small pebbles. In some of the sea zones, we find pebbles gathered on the shore. We most often in our sites, we see only the sandy beach. Okay. So it is the tree's lament. What is the tree's lament? What is the ditch like murmur? The murmur is the, the casuruna tree's lament. What is the meaning of uh, lament here? Cry or moaning or making sound such a way is called an airy speech that happily to the unknown land may reach what's the meaning of an airy speech strange sound or strange noise that's what that it refers to the poetess is certain that it is a tree's lament she confirmed that it is a, the casuruna tree's a, a lament in these lines, the poetess conveys her strong belief that nature can communicate with the human beings. Okay, the, the tree is lamenting and she feels that as if the human being is uh, uh, crying. She can hear the tree's lament even from where she studies in France and in Italy. It is a strange cry of that lament that she could hear in foreign places that could perhaps be heard or reach the unknown lands unknown lands refers to the trees in bengal 
when she is she was studying in um, Italy and France. That is that seems to be unknown place. The unknown also can be referred to heaven also. In heaven, who is there in heaven? Her brother Abju and Aru. It can be heard to those uh, her siblings. That's what she refers to. Unknown land may reach. The cry of that Kazuruna tree may reach the unknown land. Not only to Thorutat but also to her siblings. That's about the uh, explanation of the third stanza. Let us also see the figures of speech put in this stanza. What is the dislike murmur that I hear? There are two simile, there are two uh, figures of speech. Uh, one is a simile, the other one is a personification. The word like is there, that's called a simile. In what way it's a personification? What is the ditch like murmur? Murmuring is the human character characteristics. It's not of the tree. We never see tree murmur and speaks and all that. So murmuring is a human characteristics. So when it is compared with the human characteristics, that's why we call that it is a personification. Like the sea breaking on a single beach, the word like is there, so automatically it is called a simile. It is the tree's lament and airy speech. This is personification. A lamenting is what is that? Crying silently. This is also human characteristics. Only human cry, weep and express the sorrowful feelings. Not of that tree express its lament. Again, it's a personification. And also I have put a few appreciation questions here. You can view and read it by yourself and know the meanings of a certain uh, from the third stanza. Now let us move on to the fourth stanza. So please, uh, dear students, listen carefully while I read and try to get a few lines that you like the most so that which you, you may understand very well. Unknown yet well known to the eye of faith. Ha! Oh, I have heard that wail far, far away in distant lands by many a sheltered bay. When I slumbered in his cave, the water writhed and the, ge and the waves gently kissed the classic shore of France or Italy. Beneath the moon, when the earth lay tranced in a dreamless swoon, and every time the music rose, before mine inner vision rose a form sublime, thy form, O tree, as in my happy prime, I saw thee in my own loved native clime. This fourth stanza is highly a philosophical one. What's the meaning of philosophical? Philosophical is a study of fundamental nature of knowledge or reality. I have divided this fourth stanza into two parts so that it may be clearly seen. Look at the first line, unknown yet well known to the eye of faith. The poet brings out that if anyone has a strong faith, nothing remains unknown. All unknown, it can be of anything, becomes well known to the eye of faith. To only those who have faith can see the unknown things. We too believe that when we faith in God, that will be possible for anyone. That's what the same feeling the poet is having there. She has the faith that she can see the uh, tree in wherever she goes. That's what she is seeing there. Oh, I have heard that wail far, far away. Again, the poet has believed that nature communicates with human beings. Even when living in distant lands, she could hear the wail of that Kazuruna tree. The Kazuruna tree is in her native place in Bengal or in India. And whereas she has gone to France and sometime in Italy uh, to study, even in the furthest place, she is able to hear the wail. What is the meaning of wail? Lament or cry? She is able to uh, hear the uh, cry of that Kazuruna tree. The Kazuruna tree is wailing, lamenting without the presence of the poet and her siblings. In distant lands by many a sheltered bay, in distant lands refers to the furthest place. Sheltered bay refers to protected bay. Bay means a body of water. Sheltered bay. 
After all crossing many seas and continents, the poetess is in France or in Italy, whereas the tree is in, in her native land, in Bengal, in India. Still, she could hear the cry of that Kazuruna tree. When slumbered in his cave, the water writhe. Writhe means apparition. Apparition means a dead spirit. Actually, this is like a phrase. Water writhe. It is like a phrase. This phrase is taken from the poem called The Arrow in 1814 by Wordsworth. It also can be called Water God. Water writhe can be called as a Water God or already it is given here Water Ghost. When the water ghost or the water god, when he is sleeping in his cave and the waves gently kissed the classic shore of France or Italy. Waves, sometime whatever, when we go to the seashore, we could see the waves. It hits the shore. It dashes against the shore and goes back. The same way, when the pro this process is considered here, here as a, a gently kissed the classic shore. It gently dashes the shore, goes back. Where the place is also mentioned here, the classic shore of France or Italy. The timing of the poem is also mentioned here. Beneath the moon, it happens at a night. When the, during the night time, the poet was writing the poem. At that time, she could experience all these things. When earth lay tranced in a dreamless swoon. Earth refers to all the people in land. How are the people in the earth? Without dreams. Swoon means faint. Without dreams. Swoon means faint. Trans means deep sleep. So all the people in earth are deep in, a sleep, deep in a sleep. Without dreams in faint. Even at such time, the poet is able to hear the wail of that Kazuruna tree. The cry of that Kazuruna tree. And every time the music rose, before mine inner vision rose a form sublime. Here we could observe that a glorious form, glorious form in the sense of what in the image of that tree. A glorious form rose before her inner vision or in her imagination. There was nothing but the image of the Kazuruna tree as the tree is associated with the happy moments she experienced in her native land. What did she experience in her native land? We have already studied in the second stanza that early morning when she opened during the winter season. So during the winter season, we, she has experienced a lot. What did she experience in the winter season is that the chirping of the cuckoos, a large monkey sitting on the crest of the tree and experiencing the sunrise and the young ones of the monkey playing and jumping in the below branches of the tree. And underneath of that tree, we could see that uh, sleepy cows uh, moving towards the pasture in half mood sleep uh, as soon as the day appears. And also, we could see, uh, she could see the tree clad in frost and water lilies under the shade of this uh, Kazuruna tree. Just like a snow amassed, the water lilies have uh, bloomed in that place. All these were seen gloriously in uh, Thoru's uh, imagination. That's what is given here. Thy form, your form it refers to. O tree, the tree, as in my happy prime. Usually we use capital letters only for proper nouns. But here the word tree is uh, written in a capital letter. It is capitalized because it is uh, personified as a human being. The tree is considered or personified as a human being. That is why it is written uh, capital letter. So it is also this line, uh, it also can be called as a personification. If any of the poetic line, if you come to know the capital letter is written, not in the beginning of the line, but in between the uh, poetic line, if any word is written in capital letter, that figures of speech is a personification. That you have to keep it in mind. I saw thee in my own loved native clime. In her native land and in her native climate, with her loved people, who are her, who are her loved people, her siblings, Abju and Aru. She saw the Kazuruna tree there. The same way she saw that Kazuruna tree, the Kazuruna tree also is looking or seeing the uh, poetess. Okay. They are seeing it, each other. That is the feeling here. The reality is being set in this uh, 
stanza. So before we end up, let us sum up this uh, stanza. She can hear the wailing of the casuarina tree wherever she goes. The sound or the casuarina tree follows her to distant lands. She can hear its plaintive music, which means uh, cry or sorrow, even in the distant shores of France and Italy. When the waves gently kiss the shores beneath the moon. That's the explanation of the fourth stanza. We must observe the two words. Thy means your, your form, your form, the sense and the structure of that casuarina tree. I saw thee, I saw you. We use it in our English. I saw you. The, the refers to you. It's an object case of uh, this. This is all these two words, thy and thee, thee are uh, archaic words. In olden days, they used to, uh, they used these words instead of uh, your and uh, you. Even now, these archaic words are used in the poetic uh, lines alone. Uh, let us uh, learn about the figures of speech found in this stanza. Unknown yet well known to the eye of faith. In this line, the figures of speech is personification. What way it is uh, personified? Yet well known to the eye of faith. Faith. It's a human characteristics. Nature never have faith on anything or anyone. Only human people have faith on someone or on something. So that's called a personification. And the waves gently kiss the classic shore. It is also a personification. Kiss to the classic shore. Kissing is also, it is a human characteristics. It is not of the nature. It is not of, not of the trees, plants. That's why it's called a personification. When earth lay tranced in a dreamless swoon, tranced, okay, deep sleep you can say, or we call that as a longing for. It is also personification. Only human beings long for something, the past and the present or the future, whatever that may be. Human beings long for it. So it is called personification. That's about the figures of speech. Now let us see appreciation questions. I have given here a few appreciation questions. Uh, questions with the uh, answer so you can verify yourself and learn by yourself by reading it that's the end of this uh, third and fourth stanza the fifth stanza will be studied in the next video thank you